sometimes we create and like put people on pedestals. And I'm sure even women listening into this podcast right now might do that to you regularly, or even are doing that to me right now, where it's like, there's no secret sauce here. It's just being willing to start and keep iterating and then finding the people that can help support you in your vision that you also can help support too, because the collaboration is the secret sauce. Okay, you got your community built, you started your membership, it was growing, it was cranking out things. Tell me the pros and cons of having a membership, because I've had one too, but I want to hear from you. Yeah, so I so I started it as this very broad, like personal development membership. Essentially, my podcast is called Empower Her, and I was like, a lot of women were saying that they wanted to connect with more women in the community and they wanted more opportunities for just like connection with me. So I'm like, well, I could just probably like make something up and I'll just see how it goes. So it was great at the beginning because it really got me to get to know my community on a deeper level. And from getting to know my community, I then learned how many of them wanted to start podcasts, which led me four months later to starting a program where it helps 25 women a month launch podcasts in a cohort for for like three years. I almost did yeah, about three years. I did that. And that then turned into a mastermind and that turned into like one-on-one helping podcasters grow. So it helped me get to know people better, which was a really beautiful part of it. It was recurring revenue, but the problem that I ran into is about seven, eight months into this membership, I started getting, the membership was $17 a month and way too low, way, way, way too low. Um, And I started getting asked, you know, $700 questions at $17. And I felt like I was pigeonholed in like, I had this big, like, you know, there was like two, I don't know, like 2000 members in it or something at one point. And I was like, I'm getting asked questions and I'm devaluing other things. And I'm actually hurting the whole industry as a whole for how like the price point was so low and I didn't have a way to get out of it. So I ended up closing it. So the pros, I think residual income, but when you're thinking about doing a membership, make sure that you're pricing it. So like people are going to show up if they have more skin in the game. It was too low of a price point. And I think it was just me going into this thinking, oh, I just want to serve the masses and not knowing like how much that doesn't give people a reason to want to show up. And then also devaluing the other ways that I could serve people because that investment part, I I mean, you know this Kayla, but like the investment part is like such a huge part of the transformation that when it's so low of a cost, like people aren't taking it as seriously. So I definitely had a pricing problem. I had a niche problem because it was too broad. And then I started answering questions that were more business and podcast related, and it was all over the place. So then I ended up just closing the doors. But to the what we were talking about earlier, it did lead me in the right direction where sometimes that first thing that you do is maybe even a total shit show, but it leads you into, then it started these podcast programs, which were much more high revenue. People were so much more engaged because they had skin in the game. And then I got to really direct myself to doing something that I loved even more that was more niche. But I had to start with that first thing, right. which was me like, I literally took a Sharpie and I wrote on an easel and that's how I recorded my videos. And I just like uploaded it like that. I love it. And it was I awesome. It. And scrappy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just like resourceful, right? You're resourceful. Yeah. So, okay. So you started doing these podcasting programs. I'm a huge fan of podcasts. Obviously you're on mine yeah. right now. <laughs> we started ours around the same time. Yeah. And I feel like when people ask me, what's the thing that changed your life? I say my podcast, because it's the number one like revenue generator for us. Yep. And you know, even for me, I have these two real estate funds and then we have a capital fund that does anyways for our cash advance syndication. And everybody has come through my podcast. And when I'm talking to other capital raisers, they're like, how did you do that? I'm like podcast, you know, like, yeah. hello, like how do people not get, this is like the biggest gem, especially if you sponsor it yourself. So I'd love to hear you just got 9 million downloads. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Saw that post. Now there's people listening in right now, want to start a podcast maybe already have a podcast, give them some tips on getting to that place eventually. It's not going to happen tomorrow, but they want 9 million downloads one day. So the first question that I would ask yourself is, do you actually want to start a podcast or do you think that you should start a podcast? Because you and I love this platform, but I have a lot of people that are like, Kesh, I want to start a podcast. I'm like, oh, what is it that you're excited about with podcasting? They're like, well, I just feel like I should for my brand. 
And I'm like, okay, that's not going to keep you going. Cause you know, Caleb, like, just like I do, it is a lot of work to keep showing up. And although you love it and it is for me too, my favorite thing that I do in my business, it's going to require you continuously showing up to build up that community. It's a long game and you have to have mm -hmm. long game perspective. And when people come in with short-term expectations or they're doing it because so-and-so said that they should do it, it's like, do you actually like this platform yourself? Like, do you like talking to people? Are you a curious person? Do you want to do this platform? Do you listen to podcasts? Which sounds <laughs> yeah. like a really simple question, but I've literally had people that are like, I don't, I'm not really a podcast person, but I feel like I should start it. Like, well, that's not going to keep you going when your kids are sick and you feel like crap and you don't want to show up. Like mm -hmm. it is still a lot of work, even if it is really fun. So that's first. The other part that I think sometimes people struggle with because they aren't willing to be as unapologetic about being themselves in this space is they have this idea in the back of their head that they're kind of like toe dipping. They're not fully committed because if you're interested in something, you're going to show up in a certain way versus if you're committed, you're going to be unapologetic about sharing about your podcast or even leading with your podcast mm. where often people, you know, especially women that start shows because I work only with women. They're like, oh yeah, I just have this little podcast, this little like side thing, this little passion project. I'm like, how does any show start? It starts with zero downloads. Everybody starts that way. But one thing that I always encourage podcasters to do is to lead with the show without waiting for the accolades of it. Mm. Like when I started my show and I had like a hundred downloads the very you know first week or whatever, I was like, when I would meet people in person, I'm like, oh yeah, I just started this podcast. Do you like podcasts? And I would lead with that. Although I had so much more credibility in other things that I had done. I wasn't passionate about that. I was passionate about this show. So ask yourself first, does it actually make sense as a platform if you're wanting to start? Number two is like, are you willing to just be more unapologetic about who you actually are and why you love this platform and be willing to lead with it before all of the stats follow rather than waiting until you get to some arbitrary milestone? And, you know, for the people that are like on the fence and they're telling themselves like, I really want to start this, but I don't know because the next thought that comes up is, but there are so many podcasts mm -hmm. to that. I'm like, yes, there are 4 million podcasts, but only 27% of them are active, meaning they've released an episode in the last 90 days and they've released more than 10 episodes. So if you love it and you just show up consistently, you're already in that 27%. You're wiping out everybody else. And you compare podcasting to blogs and YouTubes and all the Instagram people and all the algorithm crap that you don't have to deal with. But as far as getting started, one thing that's been really helpful for me and that I teach podcasters is to figure out like, what is your community all about? So that when someone listens into your show, they can grasp onto that idea. And you're also teaching them how to share your show. For example, on Empower Her, we say, this is a come with me, let's figure out life together. Not a mm. look at me, I've got this all figured out. So with that statement comes certain values. Like the women in my community really value transparency. They want, like they're okay with the fact that I just like make up words and I talk about random stories and stuff like that because they feel like, the positioning is like we're girlfriends chatting. So I don't have to feel this need to be an expert, but it's more like the positioning is you're listening to a girlfriend when you're in the car driving around or whatever. So ask yourself that when you're first starting is like, what could I make this about? Even if it's polarizing, I actually think that can be really helpful. Is like, we're all about this or here we believe X, come up with what that statement is and start to say it over and over and over again in your show because you're teaching people how to explain this podcast. That way, when someone listens in, they're like, yes, this is for me or nope, this isn't for me. And they know that right away. And then they're going to spread it organically because we haven't spent a dollar on advertising. It's been all completely organic word of mouth, a friend telling a friend telling a friend. And one more tactical thing that I hear a lot of podcasters do is they'll say, leave a review, send it to your girlfriends, post it on social media, post it on Facebook, send it to your email list. I'm like, Holy shit. You just told me to do five things, like five mm. calls to action. If you tell me to do one thing, I'm so much more likely to do it. So I normally recommend to people, depending upon what their topic is, I'm like, tell people to tag it on Instagram stories so you can thank them and they can help you spread the word about it. Or after they've tagged it a couple of times, then ask them to leave a review, but don't ask them to do five things at one time or they're not going to do anything. That is so good. I love that practical advice. So you've built up this podcast to help so yeah. many people. You've made a lot of money. And let's talk about what you've now done to really create that financial flexibility. So when you have the baby, you're going to have so yeah. much freedom. I'm so excited for you. You did it like you did it the, like, you know, the way that 
I wish I would have done it, but, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you live and you learn. So talk to me <laughs> about what you have invested in to give you this freedom. Yeah. So we had my husband, Cena and I had this conversation. He used to be a dentist and we lived in Southern California and he came to me one day and he's like, I just like, don't know if I love dentistry. And I'm a huge proponent on the fact that our days are numbered here. And I want mm -hmm. him to build a career that he loves too. And I never saw us having as much flexibility as we wanted with him being in this structured environment. But we moved from Southern California to Austin for him to try out one other type of dentist clinic. And the reason I'm even saying that is because sometimes we tell ourselves the story of like, this is not the right path for me, but we haven't tried it in a different capacity, right? Like maybe you don't want to be a teacher in a classroom, but you could crush it teaching courses online because you still want to teach, but it's just a different environment. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we moved to Austin. He ended up getting this dream job situation and he was like, I still don't love it. I was like, okay, awesome. Quit. So he decided to quit dentistry and he had this idea of investing in real estate. And I was a huge proponent straight out the gates of it because I also saw that everything that I was doing at that point was still requiring me to be on as much as I love podcasting and all the sponsors. And we, it is a high revenue generating like stream of the business, but it still requires me to show up. Right. And keynote speaking and hosting retreats and hosting events and doing masterminds. It, it requires me. Right. So I was like, how, like, am I gifting a future version of me, which at the time we weren't pregnant yet, but we knew we wanted to focus on that coming up in the next like year or so. I was like, I, am I gifting a future version of me optionality? If this is where all the money is being made, but I have to be showing up for it. Or how could we diversify and like add another stream of income? So he had the idea for real estate investing. I saw like, Ooh, this could give us more options. So we ended up moving. We live in Denver, Colorado now. We ended up moving here. We immediately were like, let's take the money from one business where I'm kind of like the forward end of the business with the cash flow. And we just take that cash flow and pour it into real estate. So we bought a quadplex here in Denver that we now do midterm rentals with. And then we bought two Airbnbs that are geared towards bachelorette and retreats. So I can host retreats at our Airbnbs, but also we get Thursday through Sunday bookings of bachelorette parties like every weekend designed these properties for bachelorette parties. So we just really started focusing on let's, instead of having the goal of me building a business to sell personally, that didn't feel aligned for me. I was like, I'll be this front end machine and we'll just pour all of the cash into investing in ourselves. But other than that, investing into real estate or other businesses. So now it feels like I'm really fulfilled by it. Like I launch a program. I'm like, okay, here, let's take this 30 K and move it over here. And then what can that be? Let's get a down payment for a house and let's buy another one. Yes. So we did, um, four, we bought like four and a half million dollars worth of real estate the first 14 months that we started doing wow. this. And it's just like falls to the wall and he manages all of that. He's way more fulfilled, which all the Aww. money is great, but like he freaking loves it. And I love it because I get to be in this creative space where I still get to kind of feel like I'm a free bird and I don't feel the pressure of building a big team or having to figure out how am I going to eventually sell this or what's this going to look like? I'm like, I'll just launch stuff and we'll just drive it into real estate. So that's the current stage that we're in right now. Well, I love it. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll notice her background is she's at one of her Airbnbs <laughs> right now. Now I want to go yeah. to Denver and stay at this place because yeah, it looks so cool. Uh, you know, and if you're listening into the podcast, make sure to head over to YouTube and actually see this on video. Yeah. It's so cute. Is it Marilyn Monroe in the back? Like yeah, popping bubble gum? So yeah, cute. she is. You so guys have cute. to check it out. In our living and, room. <laughs> you know, so I love this. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what I teach yeah. in all, all of my programs. Make money, not yes. to live on. You, you got to make a lot of money to then invest it. Yes. What happens is people start to make money and then they change their lifestyle. And that's a mistake. I truly believe that. It's keep the same lifestyle and move it over to an investing option because in five years, your life will look drastically different yeah. if you build up that muscle of investing. And, uh, anyway, so I get so excited. I've never, I've, yeah. I've never done short-term rentals and yeah. I don't know, like, as it is, it's a full-time business, right. To, to run that. And so it hasn't been something that I'm excited about, but I love, I love the idea. I have a couple people that are in my programs where they do Airbnbs and it's, this is it where you have a niche, like, you yes. know, you're going after the bachelorettes. And yep. they come here just for these pictures, right? Yep. Like yep. you have to go all in like that. And a couple of the people like have been like, well, it's just in a nice location. I'm like, yeah, but when you do this, like the marketing, it's, it's genius. It's so genius. So I love it. If I ever did an Airbnb, I would do something similar to you. It's fun. Well, 
And it is, it's interesting because it's a lot of like, so we also, we have a long-term rental in Phoenix too. And we have a property management company. We don't even touch that long-term rental, but I wasn't excited about the long-term rental because Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't contribute anything to that versus this. I loved getting to contribute to the design and even like selling of it and then getting to host my own retreats. And then women in my community that are now doing Sunday through Wednesday retreats at our properties. And I can pop over and like speak because I could bring a baby. Well, you know, like I was envisioning that future version of me. And I was like, I could bring over a baby. I could just be like breastfeeding. Like, while I'm like hanging out with these girls at this house. And I just saw that lifestyle. And I was like, okay, we can, if I have this vision, then we can figure this out. And my husband is more analytical and I'm more like, and he's more like integrator and I'm more visionary. So I'm like, okay, what can our roles be like? But honestly, Kayla, like, and for anyone listening in short-term rentals to get them started takes a crap ton of time, but to manage them, it takes him now for both of these properties about two hours a week each. Wow. So it takes a long time. It took like three months to get them launched. Cause these are like, they sleep 12. So they're big houses and there's a lot that goes into that. But now the management of it and they'll probably both do like 180K profit each this year. So it's like there's opportunity there, you know? Yeah, there totally is opportunity yeah. there. So if you are somebody that's listening in right now and you're going, okay, I have a nest egg to invest. Yeah. I think it's important to just ask yourself the the questions that Keisha asked herself, right? Like what is what am I gifting my future self? Like what do yeah. I want that to look like? And then go and get educated. So when you started doing short-term rentals, did you buy a course? Like, how did that look like you guys becoming these real estate investors? Yeah. So we, local to Denver, we started going to like Airbnb meetups. One of my closest friends here, she is the co-owner of a brokerage that specializes in Airbnb. So we found people, and I'm huge on doing this in every capacity. Find people that look like the direction of where you're headed. Yes. That's where you've been, right? Good. I was like, okay, these people are doing a couple million dollars a year in real estate. I'm like, okay, I need to just figure out what they're doing because if they can do it, then I sure as hell can too, right? Which goes back to the original conversation that confidence. you and I have focused on so much of building confidence, right? So just physically getting in the rooms, like courses are amazing and so valuable, but I think there's a lot to be said when you're like standing next to someone and you're like, this guy is just like your average guy and he figured this out. I can figure this out too, because sometimes we create and like put people on pedestals. And I'm sure even women listening into this podcast right now might do that to you regularly, or even are doing that to me right now, where it's like, there's no secret sauce here. It's just being willing to start and keep iterating and then finding the people that can help support you in your vision that you also can help support too, because the collaboration is the secret sauce. Like when we met people, I'm like, okay, they are proof of the numbers that can be done in Denver. Cause Denver is not a super desirable, like top 10 destination for bachelorette parties. But what, but anyone that's coming here for a bachelorette party, they're definitely going to stay in one of these two properties because they're wow. the best ones targeted exactly to that. Mm-hmm. So it's like the fear and the scarcity mindset that sometimes comes in when you're doing something new. It's like, if you have people around you that have already done it and you know them, you're like, Oh, we can figure this out. So proximity, you know, everyone says this, but proximity really is power that's real estate. That's how I've done things in the podcasting space with events, just like people that are showing me you can do this. Like I did it. I'm like, okay, this person did it. So it'll be good. (laughs) Absolutely. It's, it, it is about getting in the room. And I am the type of person, like you guys know, listening in, I don't like being in rooms with people. Like I like being, I like being at home with my family. (laughs) Okay. I am like the biggest homebody there is. And, but every time I get out and I put myself out there, I I like it. I end up going, Oh, I I met somebody that's amazing. Like I love this person. The last event I went to, I met a woman who now we're doing business together. Like tomorrow we're closing on a 432 unit apartment complex in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. And it was amazing. You know, I was in a room full of men and she was a woman. So of course she's going to stand out in the (laughs) room. And I'm like, I go up to her. I'm like, we need to be friends. I need to know what you have going on. How can I help you? And she had already a billion dollars in assets under management. And I'm like, okay, how, what, what value can I bring to her? And she was just getting started on building a personal brand. So I was like, okay, 
I'm going to teach you how to build out this personal brand. And now she has a Facebook group full of thousands and thousands of people. She's starting her podcast. Like it's been such a good collaboration. And I dragged my feet all the way to that event, like kicking and screaming. I do not want to go. Somebody gets sick so I can stay home. And it was like, okay, I am here. So it just goes to show you, like when you feel that resistance around getting into the rooms, you just got to lean in yeah. and push through it because there's something so beautiful always when you get into those rooms. And I love, and I'm sure people hear you say this all the time, but I love how much you're reiterating, like, how can I add value to this person too? Mm -hmm. Cause how mm -hmm. many DMS do you get of like, can I pick your brain? Can I whatever? And it's like, no, no, no. Like how can you mutually benefit each other? And that might involve for some people listening into this, what it involves for me, which was like, go get in my lane, figure this out. And then wait until I had a platform that I could then invite some of these people to speak on. Mm -hmm. Right. Or wait mm -hmm. until I decided I'm going to curate this event. And then I can ask them to speak on my stages because I didn't have as much value to offer early on, but it's like, you're being creative of like, what can I do? And I think Absolutely. that's so important for people to hear that it's not like you're just this constant asker, but instead you're like, how can I like think strategically of what would be valuable to this person? And that equal energy exchange is so huge, you know? So huge. Yeah. Okay. So where do you see yourself in five years? Definitely two kids. And I think we'll probably have somewhere around like a $50 million portfolio in real estate. Uh, I want to write a book for sure and do some sort of book tour. I have this idea of being on the Drew Barrymore show and then maybe having my own talk show eventually. Uh, just Ooh, I love it. There. I love um, it. But I want to be a really present mom and wife, but I also want to be really unapologetic about showing women you can make a crap ton of money, make impact, and also just really love the process of it and just like prioritize my family, but still also get to build a business because there are so many women and, you know, Honestly, Kayla, you're such a good reflection of this for me at this stage in my life of how you just embody being a, being a wife and being a mom and showing up and just being yourself so like boldly out in the world. I want to be that example to people who had a similar fear to what I've had is, you know, I'm 33 and having my first baby right now. And part of it was a little bit of this fear of like, how am I going to do both? Because sometimes if it's hard to even envision like being what you can't see in the world. Right. And so... I just want to be like really open and honest and transparent about the journey along the way. And I feel like I might be a boy mom. I don't know. We'll see what the second one is, but I feel like I can kind of see that in the future and just like traveling and just like getting to give back to the world in a really cool way. So it's a mix of a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Well, I think you just living your life out loud is giving back to the world because yeah. you give permission to so many women out there who are scared. And, yeah. you know, you just do it anyway. And we need more women like you. So I just want to honor you and all of the goodness you're bringing to the world. I love your just bubbly personality. And you're just like, thank here you. I am. <laughs> and you're just going to, it's like, you're just bringing sunshine into every room. So oh, I, you, I love that. And I'm excited for you to become a mom and we'll have to have you back on the show. You have an event coming up that I definitely want to promote and make sure people know about. Yeah. So where is it at and how can people get their hands on tickets? I'm going to tell you, Kayla, I feel like maybe I will be texting you like, Hey, this just happened with my boobs. What's going on with my vagina? Like help me. Um, cause I just like love hearing from people's hey, perspective. Hey, I used to be a nurse. So I love those. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. So empower her live is our event here in Denver. It's September 22nd through the 24th. And it's a three day event. Cause I'm really big on like immersing yourself and just getting around that. Like, you know, I mean, you've done tons of events, you know, the vibe of just like being around other women. Yeah that do look like the direction of where you're headed. And so this event is really designed for people that want that clarity and connection, but also need to get out of their day-to-day -day life so they can start asking themselves better questions of like, what is it that I actually want? You know, if, if I could do anything, what's possible for me and really people that are in that stage of wanting to give up their version of good and go for great in whatever way that looks for them. We've got amazing keynote speakers, a whole big lineup, but yeah, hundreds of women here in Denver. So if you're interested in details or coming, you can check it out at empowerherlive2023.com. So yeah, yeah I'm really pumped for it. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll make sure to link that up in the show notes. Thank and you. I'm just so thankful. I love this conversation. And I think people are going to now want to invest in real estate. They're going to want to <laughs> uh, start a podcast. They're going to want to do all these things. And so I'm super excited to see people just go after their dreams. So I again, thank it. you so much. Thank you, Kayla. I appreciate you.